Now you might think that you need Refax subscription to place a bot exactly how you want it, but that's not really true. You can actually place the bot wherever you want it by using a combination of commands. First, you want to use the command bot underscore mimic minus one. This will allow you to possess the bot, move it with your movement keys and also with your mouse it will look up look down as you like it but make sure your yaw offset is not set to 180 sometimes it just bugs out and the bot just the wants to decide that it wants to be a beyblade like it wants to be kai and it just starts rotating or your solo queue teammate then make sure you set it to zero so just like this and the chances of bug kind of drop down you can use a combination of these two commands these two binds to place the bot exactly like you like them now one more thing you might have noticed is that sky was black now it's blue you can use this command it is obviously a cheat protected command but it's really good for making your frag movies another command which is quite useful for making your frag movies is this depth of field command as you can see the tree is blurry now it is clear and now again it is blurry this can be simply done by going to your console and setting this command to 1. This will make anything beyond 2000 units by default appear blurry. You could obviously change this range to 5000 if you want. Now it will increase the range of the blur. Now if you want your skins to pop more, you want to decrease the size and it will make your skins pop much more. Another command that you can use is seal and skeleton, which will allow you to see your bot just like this. Using the previous commands, you can place the bot wherever you like them and practice your wall bank without purchasing any kind of subscription. Of course, it's a little bit more tedious, but still, for the freeloaders, this does the job. Next up is the command seal tick timing print. It gives you a rough measurement of your input latency including your end-to-end -end latency plus your network latency plus your engine margins just know that it is not completely accurate it is just a good starting point you can also use any integer value along with it the smaller the value the faster it will go so make sure you set it to be decent like around 50 and you can see your accumulator simulation overflow and stuff like that and if you want to fill up your bank balance this video is sponsored by sell your skins got cs2 skins just sitting in your inventory sell your skins lets you cash out real money fast and safely with fair prices cash out using paypal card crypto and many other payment methods it has also a level system that gives you better rates the more you sell use code kitchen for an extra five percent bonus check out the link is in the description Net underscore connection on the stats will give you some data regarding your network quality. Just be careful, don't leak your public IP by mistake. Some private data can be leaked through this. The frame pacing command shows you details about every single frame. You can see how many inputs land per tick and whether you're getting slow frames. Just remember, this isn't the best way to judge your entire pipeline, but it is a really good starting point. You might notice you're getting around 7 or 8 inputs per tick. No long frames, and while it's tedious to fully analyze, it's still useful for spotting system issues. Set this command to 1 and go to your library, press Ctrl plus backslash and you'll be able to monitor your connection. Now, for some of you, this might make a difference. For me, it doesn't make any difference. Also because I'm kind of just 3000 kilometers away from Mumbai, so it doesn't really matter. In my opinion, the best bind is this. If you notice, when I press my V key, I just switch my hands, which is I switch the weapon hand. But if I press my V key now, I'll be speaking with my microphone in game. So how does it happen? Well, I press my T key, I'm going to be inspecting my weapon. But now when I press my T key, I'm going to be spraying graffiti. Whoa, that's quite useful. But again, I press F to buy a flash, C to buy a smoke caps lock to buy a molotov and 4 to get the grenade. But I can use the same keys to get the flash, smoke, nade and molotov. Again, I'm saving a whole lot of keys here. So let's say I throw a smoke, I press X to re-throw that smoke. So I'm just gonna do that. But I can press X to remove that smoke as well. How is the same key doing separate functions? Let's add some more example, like this with your scoreboard. Right now I press my tab key, I can see my score, but now I'm going to press my tab key, but I'm just going to zoom into the radar. So how is this happening? This can be quite handful if you have like a 60% keyboard because you're going to run out of keys and all thanks to Maxim. I've been using this for so long. Make sure you have exec auto exec in your launch option, then navigate to this folder. This is the default folder want to navigate it to your cfg folder if you have kind of installed it somewhere else press cmd there by clearing it now type null with an angular bracket and the file name which is autoexec.cfg and this is going to create your autoexec.cfg next up you want to just 
open the file using any text editor and just copy the stuff which I provided in the description. Now you can change it as you wish. So let me explain to you how this trigger logic works. First, you define a default set of binds over here. So you're going to see, let's say for define x, which is my x key, I'm doing something called bind x, x we throw last grenade. So whenever I press x by default, the grenade which I threw last is rethrown. Now let's go to the switch logic where something else happens. So when I press X, it just removes the smoke, but it is using some sort of alias. So over here in the third phase, usually when some commands are quite big and they have spaces in them, we want to kind of communicate it into the second process using an alias. So over here, you can see the smoke remove alias is just like this. It has a space in between. That's why we want to have it as an alias and then kind of put into right over here. But if you were to look at the V key, it does not have any space. So the alternate logic is just directly bind V switch hands. And the default logic is just to press the voice record, which is to speak. Now, in order to toggle logic, you'll want something when the key is pressed, when the key is not pressed, and you want to execute it right over here. So we just add the keys which we are using, and then we want to apply the defaults just in case some other logic is active. So whenever we load up the game, it starts from the same state all the time. Now you assign a toggle key, which is mouse 5 in my case. So this is how it works. In fact, I haven't even changed the variable name for so long. I just use Maxim's variable name. It's just so good. I will be answering all of your bind related questions in the first three hours. So make sure you comment down. Let's say if you get stuck somewhere, make sure you describe the issue properly. When you press this key, this is happening. What kind of a keyboard do you have? Do you have a different layout? So make sure you describe those things. For the first three hours, I'm going to be answering it. I hope you learned how to control the bots, some really cool commands that help you a lot. And yeah, this can save you a little bit of money. If you're in school, you don't want to use refract to test your flashes and stuff like that. You can place the about exactly how you like them maybe see yourself from a third perspective there are a lot more useful commands if you want to see a video something like this i'll definitely make another one and i hope you found it useful and thanks to all the channel members let's reach 100 000 subscribers this year